when my family broke apart in a sense where my parents divorced I think that was the hardest for me after the breakup like I legitimately felt like I lost like everything some friendships are meant not to last but to teach you a lesson Today we're going to play a game called We Are Not Really Strangers. Why don't you ask the first question then? Okay. What does my phone wallpaper tell you about me? Oh. oh. I guess oh. we have to take a look okay. at your phone. So it's... Oh. oh. It's a 0. 0.5 oh. picture of my boyfriend. <laughs> okay. Oh no, am I showing him to the world now? <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I would think that she's someone that's very humorous. Mm. At the same time, someone that loves love. Thank because you. you put your love as your wallpaper. Uh, yeah. My phone is just me. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if quirky is the right word to use. Like you, It's a bit playful, like with like the reindeer ear. Um, yeah. Did we get it right about you? Uh, I guess so, in that sense, yeah. I think I put this wallpaper up when I was in quite a low state because like I think I just got out of a relationship Ooh. yeah so it was pretty hard on me so I just wanted to love myself a bit more yeah a lot of people say like oh why are you so like thick skin <laughs> now like no, why not no, I mean like you exactly. gotta love yourself yeah. Right. Yeah. can the camera pick this up uh, wow. wow it tells me that you are a person that probably appreciates calmness and like beauty I don't know I feel like you aspire to have like peace that is scarily accurate <laughs> We should do this, I said. We should do phone reading. I'm very over with all of these kinds of like drama and stuff. So like I try my best to just lead a life where it's like very peaceful. Okay, let me ask ooh, a question. Let's go, let's go. Um Ooh, okay. If you have, when was the moment you realized you weren't invincible? I think for myself I have a lot of optimism. So sometimes my optimism it, it surpasses my physical capabilities. So my mom is a single mom, and uh, me and my siblings, there's four of us, and I'm the eldest. I've been having part-time jobs for about five to six years now. And I think a lot of young adults like myself, when we enter adulthood, we sort of worry whether you know we are able to purchase certain things. But for myself, it's more of how do I help my mom and uh, upkeep the family expenses? Um, it was like, I think it's like during my breakup period at that time. Okay. okay. It was like a year-ish ago. Okay. And it was like my first relationship. I think like during that period, um, I was quite obsessed with her. It was like, I didn't really have like a life outside of it. So you sort of isolated yourself from all your different friends? Yeah, like I kind of lost touch with them after the breakup. Like, I think things were pretty rough. I was very lonely. And like, I legitimately felt like I lost like everything. Sometimes it felt difficult to breathe or like to even, eat, you know, have an appetite to eat stuff. I think everyone goes through, there's like a, like a breaking point sort of thing. Um, for mine, I remember it was during my poly days because there were camps and there were like school events and I was also working part-time. So it was a bit uh, overwhelming when it started getting too much and I would go to the school's um, handicapped toilet and I would just sit there and I would just either, I would just have like my own private breakdown or I would just like sit there trying to catch, catch a breath because it felt like my life was controlling me and not the other way around. I guess probably when my family broke apart in a sense where my parents divorced. Yeah, actually it only happened like last year. But it came to me as a huge sur shock, not surprise, shock. Because um, I've never heard my parents actually fought. Like there was no like shouting, there was no like loud banging or anything. And it, I think the, the hardest it hit me was probably when my dad left. He like told us like, oh, he was gonna leave. Yeah, then I just broke down. What was going through your mind when he left. Um, what was that like? I guess that everything was confirmed. Like, nothing was gonna change. Yeah. Even though I know that, you know, he's happier now. Like, I know that both, sorry, but both my parents are happier, like, separately. I was still, like, I was still be upset, lah, thinking about the moments where, like, he, like, left the house. I think that was the hardest for me. Yeah. 
Oh my god. I didn't mm. expect to cry. Thank you for yes. sharing that. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Why am I crying? <laughs> no, I'm I mean, so it's, sorry. it's so recent also. Like, yeah. you know, yes, it was yeah. just like last yeah. year. So I can imagine that it's still but something that. I think the decision wasn't wrong in a sense where I can tell that they are definitely happier and I'm very happy for them. It's just, um, I guess, a sad memory. Yeah. yeah. There was also a period or a season also in my own life that um, a whole year, my family was going through like some stuff as well. Um, some like financial issues and like I realised it caused a lot of tension like within my family. But like on social media, like our friends knew us as like the family who was like super close and like super like, oh, you guys have a lot of fun together and all that. And then I felt like, dang, like I don't have it all. So how do you manage to cope during that period of time? I think time, I would say time cues. After a while, it just all settled down and I just got used to like, you know, living with my mom and my brother and uh, meeting my dad separately and things like that. I think for me, um, I did a lot of... I talked to a few friends at that point. It's very hard for someone to advise you on a situation where it's like um, out of their control, even your own control. They wouldn't exactly. even know yeah, what to exactly. say. But I think having them listen was actually very... Um, was very therapeutic. <laughs> so it's important to have good friends. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So this question will be split into two parts. So what part of your life hurts? Um, I think definitely ending poly life. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to graduate soon. And it is like mixed feelings. It's okay. Like on one hand, I'm happy that I'm... Um, gonna complete my journey but right. I've been through a lot of stuff with these friends like the whole breakup thing and I feel like I've really come into my own person in during poly and so it's gonna be sad when I have to leave like the setting and then have to face like a new chapter yeah it's like growing pains mm. all of us <laughs> have to sort of journey yeah. through <laughs> yeah them. The good thing is that I surround myself with like people who are good for me spiritually, Im- emotionally, psychologically. And one of the greatest things about my uh, my boyfriend is that he was like, teach me what your coping mechanisms are so that I know how to snap you out of it whenever you go into this unhealthy coping mechanism. Like for example, I stress eat, right? And I will feel really horrible after. And he's just like, you know what? Maybe instead of that, we can do something else. You know, like talk about your emotions. I'm like, gosh. So, man, when are we going to ROMM? (laughs) Why do you find (laughs) a lot of things like this? I feel personally, it's never easy to talk about such conversations. Yeah, I'm I'm not too sure about yourself. How do you like step out though? Are you asking for yourself? (laughs) (laughs) Asking for a friend. friend. (laughs) I'm very terrified when I have to make that step. Because that fear of like rejection will always be there so I will write down in bullet points what the situation was um, how I felt after that and then what am I doing to alleviate those feelings and then whoever that I'm talking to I will just like boom there's like a huge long message (laughs) what would your younger self not believe about your life today interesting question um I don't know how much younger you can go. Maybe when I was like, but he's in his teens. maybe when I was like one, I probably wouldn't <laughs> have believed I could walk. <laughs> okay, but I think definitely being able to be self-assured and not care so much about what other people think, and also wanting to like fit in with them. So you were a person who, when you were younger, tried to fit in a lot? Yeah, because like, I was scared that um, people wouldn't like me, I guess. But I guess you sort of lose your, like, what makes you you as well. Mm. And yeah, you can find, you can always find people who like you for you. Okay. Yeah. Actually, when I was younger, I was very, um, I'm a very loud person. Oh, like, okay. I, like to talk, I like to talk a lot. I'm definitely the noisiest person in my family. I think my younger self definitely wouldn't believe that I will become more of a listener today. My mom and my brother, we do have like open talks and our life is definitely better in terms of communication. Like something I didn't thought it was important in the past, but after the divorce then, yeah, I realized a lot of things and I think it helped me to 
also grow to who I am today. Yeah. When I was in my teens, I was telling myself like, mm, would I even be able to go to uni? Or is anybody even going to be like my friend for more than five years? I'm a people pleaser. So if you ask me to do something, I don't really know how to say no. I had a really good uh, mentor in school. So what he said sort of stuck with me and he said that you cannot please everyone. It was very difficult to stomach it at first because helping people makes me feel happy. But helping myself should also make me feel happy. So I slowly took steps to scale back and there were moments where, you know, I lost certain friends in the process because I cannot say yes to whatever that they want me to do anymore. And um, I would gladly say that some friendships are meant not to last, but to teach you a lesson. I really love what you shared because <laughs> oftentimes what we always hear is push on, keep on going. Yeah. How many times do we hear people telling us to, you know, take a step back, yeah. scale yes. back. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's something really that we important. all have to learn as well. Yeah. And I always think about that version of me in the past and if I could have a conversation with her, I would definitely say like, you know what, you are, you are working so hard right now and you are prioritizing like a lot of people around you but you should also prioritize yourself and you will definitely make yourself proud that is the most important thing so after a night of playing with some friends it is finally our turn yes. we get to play now all right okay so if you have when was the moment you realized you weren't invincible right okay i tend to be very close off and it wasn't until when I had my breakdown and when I see physical symptoms in myself that I realised that, okay, I need to seek help. So even after going to therapy, right, I'm still like, yeah, things are great, things are good, you know. I wasn't comfortable to talk about my own emotions. It's, it's kind of like I discount all the feelings that I have until it gets to a breaking point and maybe I feel like I should talk to someone about it. No, I think that's the thing, like, right? Uh -huh we often gaslight ourselves uh -huh. into thinking that we are okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think you're like trying to convince yeah, yeah. yourself um, it's yeah, not you, that big of an yeah, issue. Exactly. I would say people know me as, you know, Adele, there's someone that's positive and confident all the time. But how many times do I have to run to the toilet when we start mm -hmm. shooting, right? Yeah. The anxiousness is real. Mm -hmm. And hosting to me is still something that I'm learning to be comfortable with. Okay. Okay, Wendy. Mm -hmm. What would your younger self not believe about your life today? Mm. I think my younger self would not believe that I am this confident. I'm really genuinely not the most comfortable on stage. So, um, I never really had thoughts of like, you know, becoming famous. Even now, like my even with content creating. So I think my younger self would definitely not believe that she is doing, she's being funny and being paid for it, you know, or like, right, oh, just appearing right, in front okay. of camera and like being paid to be, um, just appear in front of a camera. My younger self would not believe that people would want to listen to me. Oh. And I can't believe that I'm hosting right now and I'm sharing my stories and talking to people on talking to people on the streets mm. today's episode and like hearing everyone share about different little stresses in life daily worries sometimes it's not the big things that you need to experience before you can like go out and seek help as well right yeah and let's try our best to acknowledge that yeah it is okay to not be okay we have exactly. to acknowledge it exactly yeah yeah and if you need help it is okay to reach out yeah, whether it is a friend that you trust or um, or whether it's professional help like what you have been doing. Yes. Yes, and I heard that if you go to ok.gov.sg, there's actually a lot more resources that you can check out to help you if you need help in yes. uh, reaching out. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to us. Yes, and if you see us on the streets, please come and join us for Feel some tea to join and us. share your stories. We might be playing another game, we might be doing something mm -hmm. else, but yeah, join us. We would love yeah. to hear you share so good night yeah and to the next one bye bye, bye. <laughs>